Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, my name is Rikami Esca Sobrella from ECE31. And for today's episode of our Power Electronics, we will be having the single phase bridge rectifier circuit with RLOAD as our summative assessment for Power Electronics lecture and laboratory. So this is submitted by yours truly, Casabuena Rikami Esca from ECE31, submitted to Engineer Emmanuel Longares, our Power Electronics instructor. So for our summative assessment for this final period, we have this given problem wherein a single phase bridge rectifier has an RL load with R is equal to 10 ohms or our resistor and L or our inductor is equal to 25 millihenries. The AC source is VS is equal to 170 as our V amplitude or our peak value or our V max and sine 3770 volts or notably our angular frequency is 377, this one here. So we are asked to determine the average and RMS currents in the load and in each diode. So for our solution or our computation or our analysis, we will be solving for the DC voltage. So given the voltage maximum, which is 170, our resistance is 10 ohms and our inductor, inductance is 25 millihenries, we have to solve for it using this formula, 2 Vm over pi, okay, substituting the values. So 2 times 170, which is our Vmax, divided by pi, is equal to 340 volts divided by pi. So using our calculators, our voltage uh, DC will be 108.200. 0.2254 volts. So to find the average current across the load, or meaning load or our inductor or resist resistance, okay, resistor, since the inductor and the, res and the resistor is in series, okay, they are connected in series. So if we will be considering the current in the load, we can consider the current across our resistor or either the current across the inductor. So computing it, we will be using the uh, DC voltage value we got from this first calculation and then divide it by our resist resistance value. So this yields to 10.82254 amperes as our average value of the current and the load. So for the computation of our RMS load current, okay, we have to consider this long equation here wherein we will be calculating uh, the V2. Okay, So we have to substitute the value of the Vmax here as well as uh, the N, which is the harmonic number for the equation, okay, for our circuit. So substituting the value, we will be having 2 times 170 over pi times the quantity of 1 over 2, which is the harmonic number we selected, minus 1, minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which will give us a result using our calculator, 108.2254 times 1 minus 1 over 3. Then, uh, simplifying the values, this will give us the value of our V2, considering the second harmonic, as 72.5 volts. Now, for our V4, we shall just repeat the process we uh, conducted here on the second harmonic number. And then we just have to substitute the values and substitute the value of n here, which is number 4, okay? And computing it using our calculator, so it's going to be 108.2254 volts times the quantity of 1 third minus 1 over 5. Simplifying gives us B sub 4 is equal to 14.43 volts. So for our impedance, okay, for our second harmonic, we will be considering this equation here. So it's R, which is the value of our resistor, times this value here, which is n angular frequency, n times angular frequency times the value of the inductor. So we have here 10 plus j, okay, which is our imaginary number, times 2, which is the value of the nth harmonic for the impedance. Angular frequency will be 377. It is the letter W here. And the value of the inductor is 25 times 10, like times 10 raised to negative 3 or 25 millihenries. Now, simplifying this value, okay, Using our calculator, multiplying this numerical values to each other, we will be having 18.85, okay, as the result. And to eliminate the imaginary number here, this j here, we have to square the whole value of this equation, okay, as well as each of the numerical term, okay, so 10 squared plus this value, 18.85 squared. So this yields us to a value of our second impid of our impedance for the second harmonic, which is 21.34 ohms. So as a continuation, we will be considering as well the fourth harmonic impedance. So we just have to repeat the process we used on the second harmonic impedance, okay? Substitute the value, and then substitute the value of our n here, which is 4. And uh, simplifying the equation, we will be having our fourth harmonic impedance equated to 39 ohms. So to get our RMS uh, load current, okay, we will be having the second harmonic current. So to compute for that, we shall divide the V2 here, wherein we got from here, the AC voltage expression, considering the second harmonic, divided by the second harmonic impedance, okay? So this one, so 72.15, which is the value we got from here, okay? The value we got from here, divided by 21.34 ohms, okay? Which is the value we got from here, okay? This will give us 0 0.37 amperes as our fourth harmonic current. Now, computing for the RMS current of the load, we shall consider this equation, okay? We shall get the square root of the average current on the load, Plus, okay, plus all of the values of the current, uh, considering the harmonic number, okay? So we will be considering the I2 as well as the computed I4. 
just like what we've shown here. So substituting the values here, this one, then 0.8225 squared, and then 3.381 squared divided, divided by square root of 2 because we are considering the RMS value, plus 0.37 over square root of 2 squared, and then simplifying the equation, we will be having the RMS current equals to 11.0865 amperes. So this gives us the value of the average current, which is equal to 10.8225 amperes, and then the, the RMS current across the load will be 11.0865 amperes. Now, this time, we will be computing the average current in each diode. Now, having the average current in each diode, we shall consider, okay, the current computed, okay, the average current computed in the load, okay? So, to get the average current from the term itself, it's average. So, it's the totality of the value divided by 2. So, we have to substitute the value of the average current in the load, which is 10.8225 amperes, divided by 2. This equates to 5.41125 amperes, or when we round up to four decimal places, give us, gives us the average current in the diode as 5.4113 amperes. So, for our RMS current in each diode, just like what I said earlier, when we are computing for the RMS values, we will be dividing the RMS value by the square root of 2. So, the IRMS which is 11.0865 amperes, will be divided by the square root of 2, which will give us the value of 7.8393 amperes, which will give us the RMS current in each diode as 7.8393 amperes. So that's our analytical solution. We'll be proceeding to our circuit construction to show you how it is being constructed. So just stay updated. Guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So for today's summative assessment, we will be creating okay, our four-way rectifier circuit with our load. So let's start with creating a new project. So let's rename it power of Let's rename it Power LX. Let's rename it Power LX to Summative. Kasabuena. And then let's uh, select the right folder and then let's click OK. And then let's create a blank project. So let's click OK. So to construct our circuit, we will be uh, we will be using okay a VSI as our easy source. Okay, so let's search it here. So let's type VSI. Mm -hmm. And then let's show this one here. Okay. And after that, let's uh, use our D brake as our diode. So let's place another component. So diode. So we will be creating a bridge. Okay, a full wave bridge rectifier. So based on our previous lessons, a full wave bridge rectifier comprises of four diodes arranged in a network or in a circuit, just like this one. Okay. So just like this one. Or I will be connecting it later on after putting our resistor. So let's place another component, which is our resistor. And this is in series. Okay. This is in series with our inductor. So let's place another component, which is our inductor here in series with our resistor. So let's just arrange our circuit so let's draw a wire here so first one we will be connecting our diode in a way like this one so this diode one is connected to our diode two our diode three which is in forward bias is connected to our diode four which is in forward bias as well so with this connection okay d1 is connected okay let's put a wire d1 is connected to our d3 here so let's just fix it here and our d2 will be connected to our d4 so this is how bridge rectifier is connected, okay, in a circuit or in a network. So let's connect our resistor here, which will be in series with our bridge rectifier, a bridge a full wave rectifier, which will of four diodes. And after that, let's have here a loop from the inductor, okay, from the RL series connection back to our full wave rectifier here. So let's connect it here, okay. And after this one, of course, we will be connecting our V sign, okay, our AC source to our full wave rectifier here on our circuit. So let's connect it here and this one. So after this one, we will be we will be having a ground okay ground connection is really necessary to ensure that the circuit will be working or functioning properly so let's place our ground uh below our v side or our AC source and after setting our circuit we will be uh we will be putting the necessary values for our v side so since our v voltage source okay our ac voltage source uh comprises of an amplitude of 170 okay based on our equation uh, we will be putting here 170 for our v max or for our voltage peak or voltage amplitude for our frequency since the given for our frequency is so since our given from uh, the problem is that our omega okay, or our w is equal to 377 for us to solve the frequency we have to take note that for an inductor okay our uh frick our omega okay or our angular frequency here which is the w is equal to 377. so then for the frequency for the circuit simulation we have to uh, fix the formula where n frequency is equal to angular frequency over 2 pi wherein giving us 377 over 2 pi giving us a frequency of 60 hertz so going back to our simulation here we will be setting our frequency to 60 hertz so this will be 60 and then AC will be zero, as well as our V off will be zero as well. So for our inductor and resistor value, we have here. So from the given problem, we have here our resistor, which is equal to 10 ohms. Okay, so let's edit it here. Our resistor will be 10 ohms. And then our inductor, as seen in this problem, is 25 millihenries. So 25 millihenries is the value of our inductor. 25 millihenries. Then let's click OK. So this will be our circuit for this summative assessment. Now for our simulation profile, 
Now, for our side deviation profile, let's check our side deviation profile here. So for our side deviation profile, we will be considering, okay, the second period values for the current across our load. Since, uh, taking note that for the first period, the values will be significantly lower than the second period values since it is not uh, it is not yet the steady state of our loads okay but after that okay on the second period there on the second period there will be a significant okay a significant increase in the value of our current that's why we will be considering 33.34 milliseconds as our run time and we will start saving data after 16.67 seconds so we will be using time domain transient as our general settings and after this we will be clicking apply and then click okay now for our side deviation let's run our circuit here Okay, so for the first, uh, for the first measured value, we will be uh, getting our average load current. Okay, this means that we will be getting the average load current either in the inductor or in the resistor, since they are in series connection. And if components are in series connection, the current flowing on them is equal in value. So now let's consider the current across the resistor. Okay, let's add a trace. Okay, add a trace, and then let's click or let's have the average current across our resistor load so let's click okay and then let's add another trace which is the rms okay which is the required value in our problem okay the rms value across our resistor rms value of the current so as you can see this is the output waveform for our average and the rms current wherein the green waveform is the average value of the current across the resistor which will be equal to the current across our inductor and the red output waveform here will be the rms value of the load current across the resistor or across the inductor so now let's take the cursor on to measure the exact values from this waveform up until here on the end so as you can see here the average value of our current Okay, across our load is 10.345 amperes and the RMS current is 10.612 amperes. Now, comparing our values, okay, our calculated and measured values from the P5, it is noted that our calculated value for the average load current is 10.8225 amperes. Compared to our measured value, which is 10.345 amperes, the value has a the value is quite near to each other, okay, which proves that our circuit in P5 is correct as well as our computation. Meanwhile, for our RMS load current, our calculated value is 11.0865 amperes, which when we compare to our measured value, which is 10.612 amperes, has a significant difference. But if you can notice, okay, if we compare the values or the difference of the values of the average load current and the RMS load current, okay, the calculated values, it is noted that the difference of these two values is quite the same with the difference of these two values here. So this proves the point that our circuit in piecewise is correct as well as our computation. Now let's proceed to our average and RMS load current values from piecewise, okay, which uh, which is the average and RMS load, average and RMS current on each diode. So to get the RMS and average current on our diode, we should add a new trace here. So we can get the values by considering formulas, okay, from our solution or from our computation a while ago. So, okay, taking note of the formula for our average current in each diode, we have to consider average current, okay, across our load, okay, which we can consider either inductor or resistor, and we should divide it by two, okay, we should divide the expression by two to get the average current per diode. So this green waveform here is the waveform for the average current across the diode. Now for the RMS current per diode, we have to add another trace, and then we have to consider the value, okay, we have to consider the value of our RMS current across the load, which we get a while ago, okay, and we have to uh, select here current across our resistor or either inductor, and then we have to uh, divide it by square root of 2 since square root of 2 can be obtained by dividing values okay since rms values can be obtained by dividing the values the average values to the square root of 2 so let's just type it okay so let's click okay so as you can see here the green waveform is the average value uh, across the diode and the red waveform is the rms value of the current across the diode now let's measure to make sure that our values will be tallied to our computed values okay as you can see our average value here for the current in each diode is 5.1 726 and the RMS value is 7.5037. So let's take note of that and record it on our table. Now, controlling and uh, comparing. So as you can see on our paper, these are the waveforms for the average and RMS value current from our piece size. And then here is the table from piece size, which shows the measured value from our output waveforms. And now on our table number four, this shows the comparison of the measured and computed average and RMS value current values from piece size and from our analytical solutions. So as you can see here, our calculated value is 5.4113 amperes for the average current across the diode with uh, with our analytical solution. But considering the trace expression used in piecewise, okay, our measured value is 5.1726, as you can see here. So with this uh, numerical values, it has been proven that our circuit is correct as well as our analytical solution because the values are near to each other. Now for our RMS load current, okay, as you can see, we use the trace expression, okay, wherein we divided the RMS value of our 
load current, okay, of our load current by square root of 2. Square root of 2 because based on our previous lessons, we are uh, being able to obtain values of the RMS, uh, RMS current, okay, of our RMS current by dividing the average value with the square root of 2. So for our calculated value, we got 7.8393 amperes, okay, as our calculated value. And for our measured, we arrive at a result of 7.5037 amperes for our current across the diode. So the 0.3 difference between the values is just a minimal difference, which proves that our simulation as well as our analytical solution is correct, okay? So that's the values for our current for this circuit. Now, to provide you the conclusions for our summative assessment, using our ORCID Lite software, we are able to understand, okay, the single-phase bridge rectifier circuit as well as the values that we got from the circuit, namely the RMS and average current values of the load as well as in each diode for the bridge rectifier circuit. This let us understand that RMS is the root mean square used to express the average current or voltage in the AC system. And for our average current, this is the average of every instantaneous current value from zero to the peak and back again on a side wave or in our alternating current, which is represented by the sine wave. So this summative assessment let us understand better the easy currents as well as the single phase bridge rectifier circuit, which is helpful okay, to better grasp or understand electronic applications requiring the control of current delivered by a circuit to meet projects and devices power requirements. So again, my name is Rikini S. Kasabena, and this is Power Electronics, and I hope I will be seeing you on our next vlogs. Bye!